CSIS 1430 is filmed before a live studio audience. So it is the, the bittersweet, the end of CSS. It's the beginning of the end, right? This is our last day today and next time we meet will be the last two days we deal with CSS. And then after that, a week from today, it's all JavaScript for the rest of the semester, right? But today, what we're going to be doing is seeing from beginning to end when your designer brings you a Photoshop document and says, hey, I want this site to look like this. When I became a, what's the word, a, not a contractor, but a freelancer. When I became a freelancer, I had a bunch of clients at first, and then I dropped all but one of them. I still have that one client. His name is Jay Sankey. He's a magician out of Canada, and I've built several sites for him. So I'll show you a few of them. So here's jaysankey.com, and I've probably shown these in class before. Right, that's Jay right there. He's been a consultant for guys like Copperfield, David Blaine. He's been on American Gods. And then there is sankeytalks.com. And these are all sites he designed, or him and his team or whatever, or friends or whatever people he knows. He designed them all. Okay, and then this, I think I showed you guys this page the other day, right? So this is another one of his, and then there is Sankey Says, which is a recent one. It's just a landing page that we built the other day. Again, this was all his design, and it seems like there's another one out there, but I don't remember. And then the one we're going to be looking at today is this one right here, Inside Deception. Now, I'll be the first to tell you that the design we're going to be looking at today is not the most amazing design, Okay. And we're actually redesigning it as we speak. And every semester, I always think, well, maybe I'll pick a different page to build in class. But I always keep going back to this page that we're going to be looking at in a minute because it has some very specific things that are common that you'll run into when you're building a website. Okay. So what, what has been recently changed is this landing page. When you go to InsideDeception.com, this is sort of the sales pitch to get you to sign up for it, right? And we borrowed the idea of the videos there from Netflix and from Disney Plus and Hulu when you're not logged into any of those. So, for example, Netflix, see those videos there in the background, right? And if you go to Disney Plus, you get a similar kind of a thing, right? So you get the same kind of idea. We liked that idea, so we decided his website is videos for magicians. So why not mimic it? So I paid a guy on Fiverr, Fiverr.com. I've talked about before about 15 bucks to design that right I told Jay to give me the images and Jay gave me all these images that you see in the background I gave him this Fiverr guy I gave him a link to Netflix and I said hey make these images look like that and he did so that's just a background image that I applied to it right really easy this image came from Jay and this this is just the you know the button here now, this is the newest part of the site. The rest of it, we are redesigning it to look more like Disney Plus, which is really cool. I really like their design. But right now, we're looking at the old one. This is seven years old. Built this thing in 2013. It's been a while. So we're going to go ahead and log in here. All right, once we're logged in, there's this 25 videos category page, 25 video categories page. And what you're looking at here is a whole bunch of categories. So the one that we're going to be looking at here is in the A-List Secrets section. And it's this trick here called Double Decker. Once I'm in A-List Secrets, I have all these. Each one of these is a video you can watch. You can see there's a very old design style. We're going to be, again, we're updating it. But the one we're going to be building is this page right here. Okay. We're going to improve it a little bit as we build it. And again, this is not the most amazing looking page. But there's a lot of really common things you'll get when building this page. So imagine that Jay sent me a Photoshop document that looks like this, and I actually have an image in another folder we'll look at in a minute. In reality, what Jay sent me were hand sketches, right? They're little line drawings of his stuff. I could probably find a couple of them and show them to you the way I get his drawings. In fact, let me see if I can find one. So that Sankey Says website I showed you a minute ago, the yellow one, this is the actual Photoshop document I got from Jay. This is it, right? So. It's the Sankey Says logo, these photos on the left and right, the little sign-up box, the text, and then the yellow background. He says right there, yellow. That's all I got from him, right? Most every side of a design for him, that's what I got. So you, you have to go with what your clients give you. Some clients are really experts in Photoshop, and they'll mock everything up. And sometimes the client has a Photoshop person. Sometimes I have a Photoshop person, and I'm, it depends on what's going on, right? My Photoshop person is always some dude on Fiverr. 
Okay, so let's close a bunch of this stuff here. There it is. That's the final product from that sketch. Close that. Close that. And on the desktop here, we have a blank canvas. We have our empty HTML file. And also, every project I make, there is a fourth folder that I don't really talk about in our class, which is called construction. I don't upload it to my server. It's just on my local machine, and I have my, my dev folder where I keep everything. And inside of there, I keep things like the sketches that Jay sends me or anything like that, any maybe resources. Sometimes he sends me an image that's just ginormous, and I have to use Photoshop to shrink it down or something like that. But I put the original image inside of the construction folder just to keep it so I have it. But right now, here's what we got. This is our Photoshop document. So the first thing I do when I get something like this is I ask myself this question. Where are the divs? Right, where are the divs? Yeah, so when I say where are the divs, I'm saying where will I make the divs be, right? So if you were to look at this, where might we put some divs? Yeah, the menu maybe. Maybe we'll make a div around here. Maybe we'll make a div around the header. Maybe a div around this. Maybe this is a div, right? Get the idea? Maybe that's its own div. Maybe this is a div. What I do in the real world is I actually print out the Photoshop document and on a piece of paper and I draw where I think the div should go. So since I can't really do that on camera, I got this for you guys. This is where I would put the divs, okay? So let's take a look at what's going on here. First of all, there's this orange one that's covering everything. It's like a full wrapper of the whole page, okay? Then look at the red at the top here. There's a red around the header. There's another red around the navigation. There's another red around those breadcrumbs. You guys know that term? That's from the old Hansel and Gretel story about the kids leaving the trail of breadcrumbs in the forest. What are your names, my poor children? My name is Gretel, and my name is Hans. Oh. Run for your dear little lives. She is a witch and means to eat you for her supper. Ach, und Himmel! Ah, your mother hides a vacuum cleaner. This is a trail of breadcrumbs of where you've been on the site. Then this red div around the main section here, which is where the video is. There's also a blue div where that video is. And then we have another div here around the title, and then another div around all these thumbnails, and each one of those have a div. And at the very top, in the header div, you'll see that it's broken into three blue divs, and the final one's broken into two green divs. That's just how my brain works. I see that and I think that's probably a good structure, right? You might come up with something different and that's totally fine, but that's just kind of how I saw it. But that's our Photoshop document mapped out how we want to do it. So let's go build it, right? In here, HTML first. Get rid of JavaScript, we don't need that. And the title, inside deception.com. All right, we had one div that wrapped everything, right? So that's easy enough. We'll just make a div here and we'll give it a class of like main wrapper. I do that all the time. Just wrap everything in a div, okay? Inside of that, you recall there's the header section here two essentially navigations, right? So let's do that. We'll go header. And then we had two navs, right? Two of those. Then we had a main section right here, agreed? That's where the video is, that's the main content. So we'll have a main. And then we have below that, this related video section. And in my opinion, we don't need this div right here. We can just put the related videos inside the div with the thumbnails, right? So we'll just give that, a, that's a section. And below that, we'll make another section for the comment form. There you go, poof, that's our HTML structure. Now, there's a few other things that we gotta put in there, though. There's more divs, for sure. So in the header, for example, we had the three blue ones, right? So that's easy enough, though, just give it three divs. There you go. There's also the green one there, right? So that goes in this last one here. And there are two divs there. Okay, so we got two divs there. So that's the structure for the first part. So the navigation, we'll do that in a minute. 
the main, we're going to put a video in there in a minute. And these divs down here with the images, we'll put those in when we get to that point in a second. But this is basically the structure. Okay. Now, this is the point where you start possibly thinking about some class names. You sort of think ahead a little bit what you're going to do with your CSS. And just the fact that I have two navs here and I want to target them differently, right? So we'll probably do something here. Class equals, uh, we'll go with main nav. And this bottom one will be our breadcrumbs, okay? And I think that's a good start here. So let's start putting in some content. Pretty straightforward, okay? If we look at the page right now, we're going to see nothing, right? If we go to look at a live version of it, let's see what we got, right? Nothing. But we now have some framework. Now let's put the content in, start building it slowly. So right off the bat, we know that the first div in the header is the main logo. So that's just an image source. I already have the images downloaded to my image folder and it's called ID logo png and this one here is the category image so if we look at the live site right now the category is called a list secrets we go to different categories here so for example guest instructors and we'll go down i actually have a video here about card control and now the top here is the category called guest instructors and so that's what icons there in the real world that image changes based on php code we look in a database and we figure out what's going on here but we need to mock up the frame, right? Just to get the basic HTML. And that's how I do it in the real world. I build the one page, and then later when I've got it all done, I'll go in and add the PHP later. That's for a different class, CSIS 2440, all right? Sign up now, it's ready, available. Go online and sign up for that, I teach that. Okay, so let's go ahead and put just whatever category image we have, which is sources image, and it's a list secrets.png, I believe. And I'm going to give these a class because we're probably going to need to manipulate those in a little bit. And the first one is going to be main logo, and we'll call this one category logo, okay? So there's our images. This div, if you'll recall, it has the green divs in it, right? So those are sort of, we'll call them extras. And then we'll call this one class equals search. And this one we'll call class equals social, like social media. And right here, I'm just going to put a search box, right? Easy. Form and an input type is a text box or text input. And we'll just put a placeholder that says search. And we'll close the form. Easy enough. And then in social, we're going to put three icons there, right? Facebook, Twitter, and, and YouTube. Well, if you look at the image we have, those, I don't like those icons. They're weird gradients and I just, they're weird. I don't like them. So we're going to go to my favorite resource for icons, iconfinder.com. And then you can create an account and log in if you want to. You don't have to though. Just search for, we're looking for social media or something like that. We'll go there. And then you want to pick free ones because there are some paid ones. And then under licenses here, you want to pick no link back, which means you can use it for commercial use and it doesn't require you to link back to the author of the icon. Some of these you can pay for it. There's lots of different options, right? We're gonna go with that. So all these are free and I can use them whenever I want, however I want. What we're looking for is, notice how there's like these Facebook ones and Twitter ones over here have more pronounced rounded corners, whereas this one has a more subtle rounding, right? So we wanna find three icons that have the same basic format, right? So we could find three with these bold rounding, like there's Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube right here. Those are all the same. Or maybe like this Twitter one, it's a little softer. And then down here, there's a LinkedIn one if we were using that, but we're not. How about there's a nice YouTube one that fits that. And let's see if we can find a Facebook one. Oh, here we go. Here's one right here. So here's a Facebook one that fits so what I'm going to do is click on it, but I want it to open in a new tab. So I'm going to hold down the control key, click, and then we're going to go up to that YouTube one we just saw, which is right here, click, and the Twitter one, which was right here. Okay, so now we can go to these pages and choose the size. We're going to go with 64, 64, 64, and then just click the download button right there, download, download, download. 
Once they're downloaded, we're just going to rename them to something that's a little bit more user friendly. Okay. We'll just dump these right into our project in the images folder right there. There you go. And in fact, I like to keep my social media icons in their own folder. So pretty common thing I'll do is make a new folder called social. There's oftentimes there'll be a lot more, right? There's LinkedIn and a bunch of other ones. And I just like to keep them all separate. So we'll put them there. Okay, back to the code. Inside of social here, those are gonna be links that go off to his social pages, right? So anchor, just have it go nowhere for now. And image source equals images slash social slash YouTube dot BNG. Close the anchor to three, Facebook and Twitter. There you go. So that's the social stuff done. That's the entire header coded up. No style. It's pretty ugly right now, right? But that's the entire header. So let's take a look at what it looks like. And we get this fabulous looking site right here, right? Beautiful. Oh, look at that. We spelled something wrong. Yeah, two T's. There we go. Nice. Okay, there we go. So far, so good. Next up, we have the headers done. Let's do the nav. We know how to do navigations, right? Just some ULs. And it's just going to be a bunch of anchor tags. And again, we'll fill in this later. Okay. And home. Close the anchor. Close the LI. And if we look at our picture, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Close it off. And then this was 25 plus video categories. By the way, what I'm doing right now is exactly what I do in the real world. Exactly how I code. Okay. All right. So the navigation is done. Breadcrumbs is next. With the breadcrumbs, we're looking at video categories, some little weird spacer thingy, a list secrets, and then double decker. Again, that will be determined based on PHP in the real world. But for now, we need to get the structure in there. Then later, we go in and add the PHP. So we go with an anchor. That's going to go nowhere for now. And it's video categories. And we'll close that out. And then we want that thing right there, but we're going to do a better version of that in a minute. But that's a start. And the next thing was A-list secrets, right? Secrets. And at the end of that, we had double decker, which is the name of the trick. Okay, that's that. Now this guy right here, that is okay, but that looks like a closing angle bracket, right? And that can cause funny issues. And you've probably seen, if you've ever been on a web page where you're looking at the content and right in the middle of the content, there's like a weird little symbol that looks like a weird question mark thing or something. What that is, is the browser can't interpret what your HTML is. So for example, if you, in Word, if you use quotes, the, the quotes are what they're called, smart quotes, where the opening quote is curved one way and then the closing quote's curved another way. Whereas in here, in regular old plain text, you just get quotes that look like this, nothing fancy, right? Well, if you try to put those fancy quotes into your HTML document, you'll get that weird little question mark symbol. This can cause similar issues. So there are codes for this kind of stuff and you just go to your browser and Google HTML ASCII characters, that's A-S-C-I-I -I characters, and grab this one, second one. So if you come down here and look for the greater than symbol, there it is. So there's the greater than symbol right there, right? There's the code. It's ampersand octothorpe 62 semicolon, or you can just use the ampersand and the GT for greater than, okay? So either one of those will work, and you need two of those. This is one option, right? So I could do two of those there and two of those there. That'll work just fine. Okay, let's take a look at how that turned out. So there's our fabulous navigation and there's that. Notice though, it looks a little different than what's there. Okay, those little guys there are a little bit different. So that's actually a symbol. That's an, there's an ASCII code for that. Okay, it's this guy right here. So you can use this right here, the R-A-Q-U-O, or you can just use that right there. We're going to use that. And we're going to put that right there. And that looks a little better, in my opinion. We'll look at it in the code or in the browser. In there. To me, that looks better. Right there. Okay? Okay, that's our navigation. Done. Next up, the main content. This is really easy. It's just a video, right? Let's just embed a video. Just go rip something off of YouTube, right? 
Because again, these videos are coming from his Vimeo account, which I have some API stuff that I do in PHP that grabs that, right? But for now, you just put a video as a placeholder to get the basic structure in. So let's just look for a Jay Sankey video. And there's his Penn and Teller one right there. All right, we go to share, embed, copy, and just put it right there. There we go, got a video embedded. We'll come back to that when we get to the CSS part of it. Down here, the section. This section is, we'll give this class equals related videos. And we just need five thumbnails. Again, those thumbnails are coming from Vimeo and there's an API key and some PHP code that dips into Vimeo, grabs that, and then puts it there. And so that's beyond the scope of this class, but again, I always do what I'm doing right now, which is build the raw HTML first, and then I convert some of the HTML to PHP. And I'll do a little quick piece of conversion of the HTML to PHP, even though you don't know the syntax yet, just to kind of show you how that would happen. We'll do that in a little bit. But right now, let's just put those images in there. That's what sites like Phil Murray are for. So I want each of those to have a div, that's the red, an image, and a paragraph. So we're gonna have a div. The image and the paragraph are supposed to be links. So anchors that are gonna go to wherever. And then we're gonna have an image. Source is equal to Phil Murray, philmurray.com. And they happen to be 125 by 125 which is a conversation I have with Jay. What size do you want? Okay. So I'm going to put 124 by 124 because the 125 image from Phil Murray is basically yellow and it blends into the background too much for right now. So we're going to leave this. Okay. So that's good. Then we're going to close or we're going to add a paragraph which says title. It's going to have some of the text later. Close out the anchor, close out the div. And he wanted five. So one, two, three, four, five. There you go. We're almost done with the HTML. There's not a lot to go. Last piece of it. Yeah, the comment section, right? And this is just a form, so we may want to put a class on here. We'll just say comments, something like that. We'll see if we need that. We need a form, and inside of there, we just need a text area. Text area, and we'll put a placeholder on that that says leave a comment pulls out the text area and then you'll also notice down here there's this little box here with the number in it that is operated with javascript and as they type in the comment it counts down they're only allowed to have 400 characters right we got an input and we'll have a placeholder that has the number and we can actually manipulate the value of the placeholder with javascript okay so we got that and then we also have a button submit and this will be value is equal to post comment. That is pretty much it, folks. Refresh. And we have our full-blown site. I mean, it's all there. It's all the HTML. Okay. So that's taken us about 30 minutes. Okay. Not much longer than it would have taken me in the real world if I was doing it without talking. Right. And without showing you guys some things. So 30 minutes. So what's our rule of thumb with HTML and CSS? Yeah, one hour of, CS of HTML is 10 hours of CSS. So we've spent 30 minutes on the HTML, more like 20, right? Because of the talking and everything. So that means that theoretically we're looking at, I don't know, two and a half hours of CSS. Now I've done this site a thousand times, right? Every semester I do it a couple times. And I know a lot of the numbers and the padding sizes we're gonna use. And we're not gonna be near as picky as we would in the real world, right? So let's go dive in. To me, this is one of the funnest parts. We start with this ugly site and a few lines of code later, it starts looking fabulous in my opinion. Okay. So here we go. Let's open up our CSS and it's pretty much an empty file. Now you'll notice on his in the image, there's that diamond plate background. I never liked that. I actually fought with him on that when he was doing it, but he insisted. It's kind of grown on me a little bit over the years, but not a huge fan of it. But for this one, we're not going to bother with that. We're going to use our own. And I've actually downloaded an image that's called BG Gray. I got that from Subtle Patterns. Okay. So now the background's gray, and it's roughly the same feel as the diamond plate. But in my opinion, it's a little bit cleaner and smoother. Okay. That diamond plate was so seven years ago. <laughs> okay. 
So let's go back. And the other thing to notice is that this is a fixed width here, right? It's, it's well, fixed, maybe not the best word, but it's not the full width. Okay. So we can easily do that on our wrapper, which was div dot main wrapper. We'll just give that a background color of white and we will give it a width of 1200 pixels and a padding of like 10 pixels and a margin 20 pixels auto. And just that alone gives a whole different feel to the site, right? It's already starting to come together a little bit. Okay. Very much the same vibe as the other one, right? Next up, the header. Okay. So now what's, what do we do here? You just said it a minute ago. Put a border on it. Yes. Let me get a t-shirt with that on. Okay. So the header. We want the header to have a border. Border two pixels, solid red. And we also want to put a border on the headers divs, the children of it. Okay. And we'll do a border two pixels, solid green. So we can start there. So we can see what we're looking at here, right? So one thing I can tell you already that I don't like is that padding I put on the wrapper. I shouldn't have done that, right? So I'm going to remove that. I want everything to go to the edge. So I'm going to get rid of that in a second, but I wouldn't have seen that if I didn't put a border on it, okay? But you can see the red border is the header. The green are the divs on the inside, okay? Let's move that padding off right there. That's better. Okay. Now, what can I do to get this green stuff looking a little bit more like this? Flexbox, yeah. Lots of options, but Flexbox is a good one for sure. So just simply display flex on the header is pretty much enough, right? We got to do a tweak it a little bit, but there we go. Now we just do the space around, right? Yeah, exactly right. Or we want to do space between because we want it to go to the edges, right? Let's just look at the difference. Justify content space around gives us this effect where there, there's some space on the left and right outer sides. If we do space between, we get this effect where the outer ones go to the edge, which is what I prefer, which is what the design is, right? Okay. Next up, we can, I want some, a little bit of padding there, right? When we remove the borders around this, the red and the green, that blue logo is going to be kind of squished. Again, it's just going to have no breathing room, right? So if we put a little bit of padding inside of each of these guys right here, right? So padding like 10 pixels. See what I mean? A little bit better. That's my maybe too much, but that's where we want it. So we'll go with like 2.5. That's pretty good for now. Next up, we want this A-list secrets to be to the bottom, right? So we are using Flexbox, so why not just do align items flex end and moves them all down, right? That's pretty good. Now this head section here, it's not quite what we want where the, the extra section here, right? But we can fix that. For one, you can apply the self property we talked about the other day, right? So right now, this line 20, align items, that's applying it to all of the header's children because the header is the flex parent and the flex items are the all the divs inside of it. Well, I can go to that specific div, which we called extras, if I'm not mistaken, right? And I can just overwrite it by saying header div dot extras. And I want you to be align self stretch. Stretch is the default. It's what it was before we ran line 20, right? So refresh. Now it stretches. It's taking up the whole width. Now, but I want the search at the top and I want the socials at the bottom, right? Yeah, make that flex. Sure. So we can make the extras also display flex. Display flex. Now, when it does it, they're going to go side by side, right? So now the search is on the left and the socials on the right. 
But that's where the flex direction comes in, right? If you remember that, flex direction, the default is rows direction. We're going to go with column. So now we're back to what we were at a minute ago. But now, if we apply the align and the justify properties, right? Now think about this for just a minute, okay? If the default behavior is row, flex direction is row, which is what is happening with the inside deception and the A-list and this actual outer green box here. And then we did space around, it evenly spaced it across the row. Well, if I've changed the direction to column and I apply justify space around, it will actually do the space around of the column. It'll be the exact same thing where it evenly distributes it, except it'll do it in the column. So the confusing part that you'll run into here, normally when you're doing with vertical alignment, you use align items. But because we switched the flex direction, we need to use justify, right? So justify content, and we want to do space between. And that will do space between vertically. And the only reason it'll do it vertically is because we changed the direction to column, right? Like so. Basically what we want, right? Now that search box is a little bit wonky, right? So we can make it bigger. And we'll, maybe we'll come back to that in a little bit. But I think the header is looking pretty good, okay? Let's look at the navigation because it only takes a minute to turn that into something cool, right? So let's get over here. And we have, we'll go with main stuff. And then we'll do header stuff. And then down here, we'll do navigation stuff. And of course, we're going to be making a horizontal menu. We know the drill, right? Nav ULLI and nav ULLI anchor display inline block, right? And then we apply everything else to the anchor, right? So color white, text decoration none. And we're going to use for our font for everything. Font family trebuchet MS. It's one of my favorites for the web. Okay, and then we just need a little bit of padding, like eight pixels. And we want the background of the UL to be sort of a grayish color, right? If we look at this thing here, this has got a weird gradient on it, which has that sort of rounded effect. That again is so seven years ago, right? We can do a gradient if we want, but not a rounded looking thing like that. But I think just plain gray would look good on this, okay? So we're just gonna do nav UL and the background color is, I believe 333 is what we want. Bam, looks pretty good, right? Not perfect, but it looks all right. Maybe a little bit more padding. In fact, I think the number, if I remember now, it's actually 13. And that font size is a little off, so we'll go font size like 25 pixels, I think. Ooh, too much. That's pretty good, right? That's good enough that we can move on to the next step, right? You'll notice that there are divider lines between, right? We can do that or not. I might argue that this looks all right, especially if you put a hover effect on it. And these are the kind of things you can do. Argue with the client, you know, let them know. You're also supposed to be the expert on what's kind of current and what web design trends are current. Even if you're not a designer, you should be aware of sort of what are some of the trends, right? And right now, and for the past several years, the big trend has been this flat design, like just flat, none of these fancy three-dimensional weird-looking effects and gradients and all that stuff. Okay, let's look at the breadcrumbs. And the breadcrumbs, also part of navigation, nav.breadcrumbs. We will do font size of about 25 pixels, and that might be enough. That's a little big, maybe... Do 18. Pretty good. A little bit of padding around it. I think we're good. Padding like mm, 8 pixels. That looks alright for now. Once we move the video around, we might change our mind. Okay. Okay. Video. I think it's too small. I want to make it a little bit bigger. Okay. Really, the only way to do that is in here. Right? Yeah, in the frame, the iframe right here, where it tells you the width and the height, is to change those numbers, which is fine but you want to maintain the proportion, right? So just do the math, right? So bust out the calculator here, and 315 divided by 560 will give you your ratio of 
your height to width. So it's 5.6. Just multiply that by the new width you want. I'm going to do 800 for the new width. So multiply that by 800. That'll give me my height. 450. Okay. 450, 800. Take a peek. That looks pretty good. Okay. Let's just center it, right, which is easy enough. Now, I will tell you this, that on a site that's fully responsive, you can make that video take up the full width. In fact, let's look at one that does that real quick, magicreviewed.com. You can see that this video, though, it takes up the full width of this little section it's in. And as I resize it, it just resizes with the page and it just fills in and fits, okay? To do that is super tricky. There's actually a plugin that I use that does it for me because it's too tricky, right? So we probably should, in theory, on this page, make that video stretch the whole width. I think that would look better. But for now, we're just gonna center it. It's easy enough. We'll just go to the main right here in our CSS, and we'll be back up here in the main stuff. And we'll just say text align center. There we go, okay? Let's push it down a little bit. So we could put a top padding on it or something. 20 pixels. Looks all right. In the previous class, when we looked at this, we decided that putting a border on the top all the way across and on the bottom all the way across was a good idea. So something like this, border, top, one pixel, solid, 444 I think was pretty good. Right there, okay. And then we'll put one on the bottom. Like that, so it sort of blocks out the video, right? Put a little bit of padding. In fact, we'll just change this padding right here to be 20 and zero. So that's top and bottom 20, left and right zero. And there we go, I think that looks all right. Might wanna increase the padding now on our breadcrumbs a little bit. We'll just give the top and bottom like 13 and the left and right, we'll leave it at eight. That looks all right. Yeah, that's pretty good. I kind of want that video to line up with the home there. So I think that's just 13 all around if we do that. Okay, so next up, we're almost done here. Let's just get these Phil Murray's fixed here. And we forgot some content above those images. We have probably an H2 or something, right? It says related videos, something like that. Yeah, okay. What can we do to Phil Murray there? To get them all lined up. Flexbox, exactly right. Flexbox is fabulous for stuff like this. Now, looking at our structure here though, we have a little bit of an issue we have to deal with. If I apply Flexbox to this, to the section, then the flex items become H2 and all the divs. We don't want H2 to be one of the little blocks that's being flexed, right? So an easy solution is just wrap these in another div, right? So if we just wrap this and we'll just call it like class equals thumb wrap or something like that. Fancy name, scooch that over, close it out. And then we'll apply flexbox to the thumb wrap div, right? We'll apply it to this. So this will be the related videos section. And then we'll just do div.thumbwrap. Display flex. One little line is such a magical line of code. Look at that, right? And then, of course, space between or space around or whatever, right? In this case, we're going to do around because we don't want it at the edges. So justify content space around. And refresh, and we get that. Not quite what we want. I did the math in the last class and we goofed around and found that if we made the width of the thumb wrap 66% and then we'll do, and that'll make it the exact width of the video. We'll do margin 20 auto. So it makes those, oh, not quite. Try 70. Yeah, close enough, right? So 70% and it's about the width of the video. So this is looking pretty good. I mean, we're almost there, right? We got a little bit of junk to do down here at this comment stuff. Let's center that related videos thing. And we also want to center those titles there. So that's easy. We'll just catch those both in one fell swoop. Right here. Paragraph and H3. Where's an H2? 
and we'll just do text align center and poof probably should push that down a hair yeah so we'll make the margin on h2 about 20 pixels looks pretty good so we're almost there i mean this has only been a few minutes of styling and tweaking stuff let's get this thing going here the comments and all that and then we'll come back here and maybe finish this up a little bit maybe tweak a few other things title though that we probably want to change that this is all a link but we maybe want the title to not be looking like a link so we can just take that out let's look at this closely here we want to target that anchor tag right there so that is thumb wrap div anchor right so we want this guy right here thumb wrap div anchor okay and we want text decoration be none and we'll do color 222 font size a little bit bigger like 19 that's pretty good okay probably should put a hover effect on that so let's do that real quick so we'll do trans form scale 1.1 is probably good enough put a little transition on that on the transform 500 milliseconds I should do it okay that didn't seem to work so let's just make sure we're hitting the right thing and we'll do just put a background color or something on it for now see if that works pink just to make sure we're actually targeting it oh it's going look at that it's going over the image can you see that but not the paragraph there probably because let's try that put that on the paragraph there there we go okay so what's happening there that anchor tag this is basically the content of the anchor tag that's why it turned pink and this is what we're actually trying to hit we actually want to hit both because i'd like if the image would scale too that'd be kind of cool so we can actually do what we had comma that right so that'll get the image to turn pink and the text to turn pink like that see or we can do the scale trick that we were trying to do so transform scale 1.2 and we should get the titles working so we want to put the image right there so on the anchor hover make the image scale and make the paragraph scale that's what we want so now we get that and the title is scaling too i don't know if that's the best effect let's go down to 1.1 and we want this transition here not on the anchor but on these same guys right here right so cut that out of there and we'll just copy that and we just want it on the image when it's not in the hover state of course and we'll put that right there okay that should give us what we want so if i hover over the image i get this nice and smooth effect if i hover over the title it's also growing maybe that's not what we want but this is where the 10 hours of CSS comes in, right? So we'll leave it, right? If we, if we think it's bad and we have time next time we meet, we'll fix it, okay? But that's all right. This is pretty decent because those are going to be links eventually. Okay. Now, I know that I'm going fast, right? The reason I'm doing this, first of all, everything I've done, you should, yeah, everybody should be like, oh, I know exactly what he's doing. I may not have thought of it on my own necessarily, or maybe I would have. But I understand why it's the choice, and I, there's no new code today. Nothing new. So let's take a look at the rest of this, this comment business here. And forms in CSS are finicky, to say the least. Okay? If you've done your pizza assignment <laughs> like good students, then you know that they're a pain in the butt sometimes. So the first thing I do when I deal with forms is I turn everything into display block. Okay, because some of it's inline, some of it's not. Just everything's display block. So right down here, form stuff, and we're going to do form, text area, and input. Display block. Okay. So that's a start, and now it moves them down on their own row, which we expected. I want that comment to be almost as wide as the whole page. 
So I'm going to make the form be 100% the width of the page. So we'll do the form width is 100%. And then we'll do the text area and we'll do 95%. Okay, so now it's going fully across there, right? We just need to do our little margin auto center trick and then pick a height, right? So we'll make the text area's height to be 200 pixels and we will margin zero auto. And there's that's a pretty good place for it, right? So that's a good question. How do you prevent them from doing this, right? There is a property called resize and you set it to none, okay? So we do that, come back here and refresh. And now you see that the little thingy there that you used to be able to grab is gone, okay? All right, this leave comment here, let's give that a little bit of padding and some increased font size. So we'll go font size, like 23 pixels, padding, five pixels. That looks pretty good. Let's get these guys down here, the 400 and the post, okay? So those two guys, they are right here, okay? If I put them in their own div, I can float one to the left and one to the right, right? The outer div parent will just take up the whole width and then we'll float each one to the left and right. That'd be a pretty easy solution for that, I think. So div class equals post comment and scooch these guys over. Close out our div, come over here, div dot post comment and we'll do div int child one and float left and the nth child two, which is just the other one, float right. Oh yeah, those aren't divs, those are inputs. I try to do divs. Input, input. There we go, okay. Now notice it's rolling out of the document there. Okay, what's going on there? Let me put some margin on the wrapper at the bottom. It's a little bit of space down there, 50 pixels. So I can see a little bit, a little bit of breathing room. Okay, those are actually sticking out of the form. So if we put a border on the form for a minute. Yeah, so what's going on is border, two pixel, solid green. So there's a border around the form, but notice the post and the comment thing are outside of the green. What's happening there, the only reason the form is as big as it is is because that text area forced it out because we told it to be 200 pixels. So that pushed the form out, right? You remember that over here? Where we told that text area to be 200 pixels tall. So that forced its parent, the form, to grow with it, but that's it. Then we have the next thing in our HTML is this div right here, right? So this guy right here is 200 pixels that's pushing the form out. This div, it has no content, so it's collapsed. And so it's not taking up any space, and so everything's sort of flowing out of the form. So the form is sensing no content there. So we need to do the overflow hidden trick on the form. So if we do overflow hidden, overflow hidden, now they're inside of the green, see it? Okay, now the only thing that's left here is we need to scooch them over a little bit, right? So they are, that div right here is 100% by default of the form. The text area, we told it to be 95%. So if we just make that div also 95%, it should line everything up, right? So let's turn off the border here. We don't need that anymore. And we want this post comment right here to be width 95%. We'll give it a margin, 20 pixels auto. And there we go. That's about where we want it. Let's just make them a little bit taller. And so we can do that by targeting post comment inputs and we'll make their height 30 pixels. That's all right, huh? And we'll make that font size 25 pixels and a little bit of padding, eight pixels. And we'll get the height, the forced height off of there because that's what's causing it to cut off down there. So the height is just being now determined by the font size, right? And then we'll just shrink that 400 up a hair. So that's the 
int child number one right here. We've already got that one. We can just do width and we'll do like 75 pixels and text align center. It's pretty good. So we're basically there, right? I mean, it's pretty much set. Didn't take that long. And I think this looks a little bit better than the original, right? One of the things I did not like about the original is how it had this sort of grayish thing and then this different blue color and there's like all these layers of everything. It looks weird to me. So I like that it's all one color, okay? Let's tweak this search thing and then we'll be done for today, okay? So that let's turn off all the borders on the header. We don't need those anymore. So borders go goodbye. Okay, so this, I got turned off the borders, I think. Yep, and now let's just play with this search a little bit. I want it to be pushed down a hair, right? And so that is the first guy right here, the form that's inside a search. So class search, I knew we were going to need that. So in the header stuff, real quick, just down here, we'll say div.search, and we can just give that a padding top of like 10 pixels. Let's see what that does. That's pretty good. Increase its size to width of 95 pixels. I don't know. Okay, let's just manually do that in our inspector real quick. So we'll find that in our header, down in extras, down in search, and then the form. We actually want to target the form there. And we'll make that form width. So let's change that to form, put a width in there, and then, okay, now we can see that. We actually want to hit the input inside the form, right? Okay, so we want that as our target. Now we can look, and we'll see down here, this form right here, this 95 width is being overwritten. Do you see that line through it right there? We're probably not being specific enough. So real quick, let's just fix the specificity here. And we want to go div, search, We'll just put an ID on it. That's pretty specific. And we'll say search right there. So now in this form here, put that search. That should give me the specificity I want. And it's still being overridden. So we will figure out what's going on there next time we meet. So we had good catch. That pixel is missing right there. That might be the whole thing. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> Okay, we can fix that real quick then. So if we go in here, so I'm just increasing that to where I want it. Just kind of eyeballing it there. And that looks pretty good right there. It's 201, so we'll go 200 pixels. 200, and we'll make the height just a little bit, 20 pixels. Look at that and make sure. That's pretty good, 40. So 40 pixels, we'll give it a teeny bit of padding. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, notice our little thing here has this fun little search icon. We'll do that next time we meet. But this, it's basically done. We just need to tweak a few things and we gotta make it responsive, right? All right, hallelujah. Any questions?